Thank you for attending today's webinar. My name is Jason Liu, a field application scientist at Roche. Today, I'd like to talk about next generation sequencing in SARS-CoV-2 research. Here's the agenda of my presentation. First, I will give a brief introduction to SARS-CoV-2, describing its very own structure, as well as a genome organization. Next, I will go over the roles uh, NGS plays in our fight against COVID-19 pandemic. And lastly, I will dis discuss NGS measures for SARS-CoV-2 sequencing. SARS-CoV-2 is a beta coronavirus that caused COVID-19 pandemic. It is an RNA virus. Inside the viral particle, the coil spring-like structure is called nuclear capsid, which is a viral genomic RNA coated with the nuclear capsid proteins. The nuclear capsid is enclosed inside a phosphate lipid envelope and embedded in the lipid envelopes are viral structure proteins. And the most prominent one is called the spike protein, which will play a critical role in our, uh, for a viral particle gain entry into the whole cell. The spike protein is trimeric. It has two subunits, S1 and S2. During viral infection, the receptor bending domain at the top of the S1 subunit latch onto an ACE2 receptor on host cell surface. The host protease tempers 2 then clip of S1 subunit uh, expose the fusion peptide on the S2 subunit, leading to the uh, fusion of viral lipid envelope with host cell membrane, subsequently resulting in the viral particle entering into the host cells. The other structural proteins embedded in the lipid envelopes are matrix protein, which is the most abundant type, as well as the envelope protein. Both the matrix protein and the envelope proteins play a critical role in viral particle assembly at this stage of viral life cycle. So here are SARS-CoV-2 genome organization. The genome size are 29,903 nucleotides. It has two open reading frames uh, near uh, 5 prime N the structural proteins, accessory proteins near uh, 3 prime N. Because SARS-CoV-2 is a positive, positive sense single-stranded RNA, it has a 5 prime methylated cap and 3 prime poly A tail. And to the whole cell, it just looks, it just looks like any other mRNA molecules, therefore can be translated by host ribosome. The translation of ORF1A producing polyprotein 1A However, because the presence of ribosome of frame shape side at the intersection between ORF1A and ORF1B, so from time to time, the host ribosome can bypass the stop codon of ORF1A and continuously translate into ORF1B, producing a longer polyprotein 1AB. However, the genes encoding the structural proteins, accessory proteins near three prime end will not be translated at this phase of translation. The further processing of these two polyproteins reduce, uh, producing 16 non-structural proteins, including RDRP, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, which is a critical component of a replication transcription complex. The replication trans transcription complex then use the genomic, genomic RNA as a template, uh, make more copies of a genomic RNA. At the same time, produce a set of a subgenomic RNA. Each of the subgenomic RNA has a lead sequence as represented by the black square, by the black square, which is identical to the lead sequence at, uh, on the genomic uh, genomic RNA. So the presence of a sub, uh, the lead sequences is required for the host ribosome to initiate uh, protein translation. The making of a subgenomic RNA is through a process called the discontinuous uh, trans uh, transcription. Here is how it works. As you see, there is a transcriptional regulatory sequence, TRS, at the five prime end of each of the structural proteins, accessory proteins, as well as at the five prime end of ORF1A. So during transcription, when I wrote the replication transcription complex reach any one of those TRS sequences, the newly synthesized conserved the core sequences can switch template and jump forward and the base pair with the lead sequence at the five prime end of ORF1A, and therefore also incorporate the lead sequence into negative sense uh, intermediate subgenomic RNA, 
which in turn being converted into positive signs uh, subgenome sub RNA. The host ribosome then translates subgenome RNA into structural proteins, accessory proteins required for viral replication. Since its emergence in late 2019, SARS-CoV-2 has spread to over 200 countries, caused more than uh, 2 million human deaths, as well as enormous economic hardship. Because this virus can also transmit it asymptomatically, containing it is very challenging. And NGS has been playing a critical role in our fight against, against this pandemic, such as funding the intermediate host of SARS-CoV-2, tracking the spread of the pandemic, monitor, monitoring the viral evolution, as well as studying the host immune response. I will briefly, uh, next, I will briefly go over each one of those applications. Whenever there is an uh, infectious disease outbreak, the timeline identification of uh, causative agents as, as well as origin is very important because this information help public health officials to help, help public health officials to contain the current uh, outbreak, gauge its threat, or potentially prevent future epidemics. Early on, when patients with mysterious pneumonia of unknown causes begin to show up at hospitals in Wuhan, China, uh, using NGIS, researchers quickly and then identified the causative agents is likely a novel coronavirus of a bad origin. Shown here a genome, genome sequence comparison between SARS-CoV-2 and the SARS-CoV-1 from 2003, as well as the four, as well as the four uh, bad coronaviruses. The S-axis is genome nucleotide position. The Y-axis is, uh, uh, is a nucleotide identity uh, similarities. As you can see, the genome of SARS-CoV-2 is 80% 80, 80 identical to SARS-CoV-1. But 96% identical to one of the bad coronavirus, uh, RATJ13. And here's their position on the phylogenomic tree. Uh, as expected, all earlier SARS-CoV-2 genomes clustered together, and their nearest neighbor is a bad coronavirus, RATJ13. And the, and the SARS-CoV-1 is up here. Based on our experience with the previous human coronavirus uh, uh, outbreak, such as the SARS 2003 and MERS 2012, the, the virus likely first jumped from bat into an intermediate animal host. From there, they mutate, uh, evolve, again, additional genomic features before spilling over into humans. Identify the intermediate animal host will help, uh, will help break interspecies transmission. And pangolin has been suspected to be the intermediate animal host. So researchers quickly sequenced the pangolin coronavirus and compared it to SARS-CoV-2. And uh, as you can see, on whole genome basis, they are 91% identical. However, if you look at the, the five key amino acids in the receptor binding domain of the spike protein, they have a perfect match, five out of five. On the other hand, for the bad, uh, for the bad coronavirus, RATJ13, also more similar to SARS-CoV-2, they are 96% identical, but only, they only share one of the five key amino acids. One additional genome feature that's unique to SARS-CoV-2 is that it has a foreign uh, recognition site, which has important implications to where particle can enter into the host cell. So the search is still on, uh, more sequencing of wild bats and animals are required before we can identify the intermediate animal host. One important tool to fight this uh, pandemic is to track the spread of the virus, perform contact tracing. Because SARS-CoV-2 is an RNA virus, it has a vir it has high rate of mutation and the replication, and therefore can generate the new genetic variations on the same time scale of as the transmission. Therefore, uh, using viral genome sequence uh, can be a, a viable tool to uh, attract the spread of the pandemic. The next trend has developed a powerful open source tool for both analyzing as well as visualize SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence data, therefore allow us to have a better understanding its transmission dynamics 
to see how it unfolds through time and space. The power of using uh, viral genome sequence data to track the spread of the virus, uh, depending on timely sequencing and the sharing of the data, researchers and the labs across the globe has been doing a fantastic job. And last time I checked, there's a 563,000 SARS-CoV-2 genome sequence has been submitted to GSAT, an international database. Analyzing viral genome sequence data also allow us to monitor the viral evolution, timely identify uh, mutations that account for select selective advantage in transmission or resistant to intervention. Early on, D614G is one of the uh, mutation of concern. It started to circulate in Europe in early February 2020 and soon become the most dominant form whenever introduced into a new territory. More recently, another variant of, variant of concern is B117. It is originally found in UK as of uh, February uh, 18, it has spread to over 16, 16 countries. And the, in the United States, it, there, there has been confirmed uh, cases in 42 states. It is more transmissible and contain multiple uh, spike mutations. The image to the left is the uh, spike, uh, spike, uh, spike protein, uh, spike protein uh, with the mutation location show. The image to the right is the, the, is the side view. Of all the spike uh, mutations, N501Y is most, con most concerning because it is located in the receptor binding domain, the motif that directly interacts with the human ACE2 receptor. Because uh, several vaccines on the market or in clinical trials were developed based on the uh, wild type N5, N501 uh, spike with the goal to elicit uh, protect, protective neutralizing antibodies to, ass uh, to assess if the N501Y mutation mediate uh, neutralization escape. Sarah from, uh, uh, from 20 individuals immunized with uh, 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 Pfizer vaccine uh, were used to neutralize either wild type viruses or viruses bearing N501Y mutation. The uh, plug reduction neutralization assay result show that the Pfizer vaccine is still effective against viruses bearing N501Y mutation. Compared to B117, B1351 uh, variant is more concerning. It is originally uh, found in South Africa. As of February 18, it, it has been detected in certain countries, more than 13 countries, and in the United States, there has been 18 cases reported. It's also more transmissible and also contain multiple uh, spike mutations. And compared to B117, which has only one mut mutation uh, in the receptor binding domain, B1351 has a three. Of the three, of the three, E4A4K is more concerning because this mutation changed the amino acid charge from negative to positive, so this change of uh, uh, this change, uh, uh, this uh, charge uh, change of uh, from negative to to positive change, uh, change the uh, receptor binding domain configuration, resulting in more effective interaction with the host uh, ACE2 receptor. To assess the impact, uh, to assess the impact of uh, E4 uh, A4K mutation on the antibody binding. A convalescent serum from four patients, uh, four patients of uh, COVID-19 uh, patients were used to uh, neutralize either wild-type uh, pseudoviruses or uh, vir uh, pseudoviruses bearing E4A4K mutation. The plot to the left shows that the relative infectivity of wild-type pseudoviruses were uh, were reduced by three of the four convalescent series. Well, the result on the right-hand side shows that none of the four convalescent sera is cap was capable of neutralizing uh, pseudoviruses bearing E4A4K mu uh, mutation. So the identification of B117 
and the B1351 uh, B1351 variance uh, underscored importance of using viral uh, using NGIs for uh, genomic uh, surveillance. Because SARS-CoV-2 is a novel coronavirus, our understanding of host immune response is limited, and therefore limit our ability to develop a therapeutic drugs and the effective treatment. So NGS-based transcriptome analysis uh, of cells upon viral infection is a very useful tool to identify host immune response dynamics as well as gene regulatory network. So here are transcriptome sequencing of RNA isolated from bronco alveolar lavage fluid, as well as prefer preferred blood mononuclear cell specimens obtained from COVID-19 patients, as well as, well as the cell healthy controls. The heat map displays genes that are significantly, significantly upregulated or downregulated in COVID-19 patients relative to healthy controls. Those differentially expressed genes fall into the categories of a humano immune response, lymphocyte mediated immunity, as well as, well as uh, complement activation, which all play a critical role in our uh, in restriction viral uh, infection. Based on those differential, uh, differentially expressed genes, functional enrichment analysis can be performed to identify biological process affected um, upon viral infection. Using single cell RNA sequencing, uh, uh, cytokines, chemical expression levels in lung microphages uh, can, be, uh, uh, can be analyzed in COVID uh, severe, moderate COVID-19 patients as well as healthy controls. As shown here, in severe COVID-19 patients, pro-inflammatory cytokines such as IL-1 beta, IL-6, TNF alpha, were all highly expressed. The chemokines such as CCL2, 3, 4, and 7 were also highly expressed. And those chemokines uh, record additional uh, uh, monocytes, neutral fields, microphages to lung and tissue, which in turn release more pro-inflammatory uh, uh, cytokines further contribute to disease severity. Now that we have gone through the roles uh, NGS played in our fight against this pandemic, next I will discuss uh, the sequencing measures used for SARS-CoV-2 sequencing. For each of these measures, I will describe the pros and the cons. And if applicable, I will also discuss how carbon labor prep case can be used in, this measures, in those measures. The first measure that I want to talk about is mitogenomic sequencing which is capable of detecting all infectious agents, including SARS-CoV-2. It also allows one to obtain the host transcriptome. This measure avoids the potential contamination from workflows such as amplicon sequencing. It also, has, it also has the simplest workflow among all measures currently being used for SARS-CoV-2 sequencing. The cons of this workflow is that it requires very deep uh, sequencing therefore has, uh, uh, has increased uh, sequencing cost. A team from NYU School of Medicine used mitogenomic sequencing to, uh, investigate, uh, to investigate the early introduction of SARS-CoV-2 to New, New York City regions. They used kappa RNA hyperprep, uh, hyperprep case with ribo-erase to construct mitogenomic, mitogenomic sequencing uh, 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 libraries. For samples with high CT values, they, they carry out the further target enrichment using SARS-CoV-2 probes. By the time of this uh, publication, they, they sequenced 1,115 samples. And they, stratif they stratified uh, the, uh, the sequencing results based on the CT values. The blue represent sequences uh, obtained using capture workflow. Orange represent uh, sequences obtained using mitogen mitogenomic sequencing. The gray represent uh, sequences uh, that don't have adequate coverage. And as, as, as expected, as the CT value decreases, the chance of getting useful viral genome sequence uh, increases. On the other hand, as the CT value increases, uh, especially when the CT value is above 40, the chance of uh, uh, getting 
uh, useful viral genome sequence data is very small. And uh, of all the sample they have processed, processed the success rate is 80 80, uh, something 8%. And most of those sequences were obtained using mitogenomic sequencing. The, the plot to the right shows the correlation bet between viral genome uh, sequence uh, coverage depths as a, as a function of a CT value. And as expected, as the CT, as the CT value decreases, the viral genome uh, coverage depths increases regardless of the sequencing method used. Based on their sequencing uh, results, their phylogenetic uh, analysis uh, show that the cases from uh, New York City region and demonstrated broader diversity than initially reported in Seattle. The second method that I want to talk about is amplicon sequencing, more specifically, Arctic Network Protocol. Arctic Network is a group organization that work together to develop a, a portable sequencing solutions that can be deployed to remote regions of the world for uh, monitoring infectious disease outbreak. This protocol was initially developed to be used on Oxford nanopore instruments. But since the uh, outbreak of uh, COVID-19 pandemics, it has been adapted to be used on Illumina sequencer. With the Arctic network protocol, RNA was first uh, converted into cDNA. After that, net A pair of, uh, uh, primer, uh, net A pair of primers were used to gener generate 90A amplicons sp uh, spanning the entire region, the entire uh, SARS-CoV-2 genome. The multiplex PCR was performed in two separate pools so that overlapping primers will, uh, will not be in the same PCR reaction. After multiplex PCR, the amplicons were combined for lab reconstruction. At this stage, lab replicates from several commercial vendors can be used for library preparation. The pros of this uh, workflow is that the primer sequences and the protocols are public available. And uh, this protocol is uh, a relatively uh, low cost and a faster turnaround time, and uh, has been widely adapted for SARS-CoV-2 sequencing. The cost of this uh, workflow is that uh, usually it targets only a single circula circulating viral strain at a time and does not cover the ends of the, the viral genome. The primary binding size can be disrupted by mutations preventing amplification of uh, associated amplicons. A team from uh, Thailand and UK uh, compared the three library preparation methods, Nestura ST, Nestura Flex, and the Kappa Hyperprep in RT network protocol. In their study, they processed six uh, COVID-19 patient samples as well as the two negative human controls. This table shows the CT values of the six coordinating patient samples. The table to the right shows that the liberal yields uh, generated from copper liberal uh, prep case were significantly higher than those obtained from the two tagmentation workflow. The plot uh, A shows the total number of reads from, obtained from each of the sam six samples uh, processed by each of the three workflows. The blue represent uh, Kappa hyperprep workflow. As you can see, it has the highest number of a total number of reads. The plot B in the middle shows that most of those reads are mapped to SARS-CoV-2 and the percentage of the reads mapping are very similar between the uh, three workflows. However, there's, a, uh, there's a, uh, up to three, uh, uh, up to three point five percent of the those reads map to uh, human map to humans in libraries prepared using uh, tagment to the two tagmentation workflows, and uh, there's zero or uh, there's zero almost close to zero human reads uh, from a couple uh, libra libra uh, libra libraries map to humans. So when when we look at the NTCs. There's a significant uh, number of reads, uh, uh, total reads in the libraries prepared from the two tagmentation workflows. And the most of those reads map to humans. And there's about 1% of the reads uh, in the libraries, in the library, uh, NTC, uh, in, in the NTC is prepared, uh, uh, processed by uh, a couple of hyperprep uh, workflows uh, mapped to uh, SARS-CoV-2. 
However, after you remove the low quality rays by quality filtering uh, and the primer trimmings, uh, the actual number of uh, SARS-CoV-2 rays uh, in NTCs from Kappa labor uh, workflows is very low, and similar to that uh, from uh, Nexterra XT, and uh, significantly lower than that from uh, Nexterra Flex. Those uh, SARS-CoV-2 rays in the NTCs are likely the result of uh, uh, index hopping. So as we know, uh, the genome size of SARS-CoV-2 is uh, close to 30,000 in uh, total uh, in, in, in size. So ideally, you like to uh, resolve very single basis if possible. But with Ampicon uh, sequencing, it's uh, is not, is not possible. And the, the complete net, uh, threshold for GSAT is uh, 29,000. And the complete threshold for uh, next, uh, next string is 27,000. So for a given number of uh, reads and at a given coverage requirement, in this case, 10x coverage, a Kappa hyperprime workflow and the Nextera uh, Flex uh, were able to generate a more complete viral genome sequence than Nextera uh, uh, XT workflow. The same trend stays true when you increase the coverage requirement to greater than 50, uh, 50 X. Only at this time, you need to sequence more in order to clear the completeness of threshold. Based on their evaluation and the comparison studies between the two segmentation workflows and the Kappa hyperprep workflows, they decided to implement Kappa hyperprep workflow in their Arctic network protocol. And they sequenced 27 COVID-19 patient samples. Their sequencing results identify six uh, separate clusters indicating multiple introduction of SARS-CoV-2 to uh, uh, Thailand uh, at the early, uh, early stage of uh, COVID-19 pandemics. Because the problems, uh, the drawbacks with amplicon sequencing, such as only single variants will be, cover, uh, will be targeted, and the end of uh, the genomes are not covered, and the uh, pr primary binding site mutation could result in the uh, amplicon dropout or unbalanced uh, and uneven coverage, a uh, hyper capture workflow is an attractive alternative because it can capture viral diversity and potentially enrich for hundreds of different viruses. It remains effective even with highly mutagenic uh, regions allowing targeting of rapidly evolving viruses such as uh, RNA viruses. The costs are the increased cost and the slightly longer workflow. Uh, early last year, uh, Roche launched uh, the Kappa target enrichment uh, uh, workflow, which, which is ideally suited for sequencing uh, SARS-CoV-2 genome. And, and our COVID-19 uh, target enrichment panel cover 100% of, of SARS-CoV-2 reference genomes, as well, as well as 183 additional SARS-CoV-2 sequences contributed by the scientific community. And the coverage by design is greater than 99.7%. The performance of our COVID-19 panel performance will be uh, presented at, uh, at the upcoming AGBT conferences. The last measure that I want to talk about is mitogenomic sequencing with a SPEC primer enrich, uh, enhancement, MSPE. This method was uh, uh, originally developed by a team at the UCSF. It has the advantage of enriched target the RNA viral sequences while retaining mitogenomic se sensitivity for other pathogens. Compared to mitogenomic sequencing workflow, the only difference is uh, you need to spike uh, uh, primers, uh, uh, target specific, uh, specific primers into the RT reaction. This workflow also compatible with optional uh, target enrichment using either tiling multiplex PCR or capture probe enrichment. To demonstrate the effectiveness of this workflow, primers for Zika, Dungis, and Ebola were spiked into the uh, RT reactions. And this plot shows the full enrichment as a function of a spiked primer concentration. The dotted line is, a, is the RT reaction that only containing random hexamers. Using uh, uh, MSP uh, MS workflow, 
the team from USSF uh, sequenced uh, 29 COVID-19 patient samples, and their sequencing results uh, reveals multiple introduction of SARS-CoV-2 into Northern California without a predominant lineage. The table to the right listed the CT values of uh, the 29 sample tested, as well as the viral load in, uh, in uh, corpus per microliter and uh, geno uh, percentage genome recovered. For example, for sample, uh, for sample 15, the CT value is about 33, and uh, the viral load is about 13 copies per microliter, and uh, about 81% of the genome was uh, recovered. And uh, in summary, SARS-CoV-2, uh, in, in summary, uh, NGS has been playing a critical role in our fight against in this pandemic. And uh, depending on your uh, research application goal, there are multiple sequencing uh, measures to choose from. And, uh, and uh, I will stop here. And uh, thank you again for your attending this webinar. I will answer any questions.